You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Today, I've got a great show for you to help you see what can happen when you stick with it, even during the good times and the bad. I'm Kathy Fetke. Welcome to The Real Well Show. Our guest today is one of our OGs. David has been working with our members at Real Wealth for over 10 years, helping them build tremendous wealth. He's been a referral partner in the Tampa region, and he's taking a break now because prices there have gotten so high to the benefit of many of our investors there. But with today's interest rates, he just can't make the turnkey model work anymore. So he's going to focus on his real wealth, and he's going to show you how he's done that and how you can do it too. So David, welcome to The Real Wealth Show. Um, yeah, this is sort of bittersweet because you've been a property provider for Real Wealth for a long time. You've spoken to over 2,000 of our Real Wealth members. Most likely, yeah. Yeah, and you were our number one provider. You've helped people make a lot of money, including me. Uh, one property we we bought from you in, in St. Pete, I think we paid 150 It's not that long <laughs> ago. It's worth over 300 now. <laughs> worth well in excess of 300 now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it uh, it stays rented. It's yeah, you've helped so many people. And this is a bittersweet moment because you are uh, bringing this relationship to an end, at least in this form of helping yeah. investors buy in St. P- Petersburg, Florida. Why is that? Well, mainly, Kathy, it's it's what is real wealth, you know, all about. And it is an understanding that you know, money is important um, and your day job is important, but also, you know, I'm 52 years of age. Um, I've worked really, really hard since I was probably eight years of age. And I'm looking at my life now. Um, I'm My mom, unfortunately, got early onset Alzheimer's when she was 59. So just looking at her life and she never got to live her retirement. I have three young kids. I've got a you know, an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and a two-and-a-half-year-old. And so I really want to be present for the next couple of years and genuinely present in the real world where I'm not like, oh, I need to run, I need to do this, or I need to send that email or any of those kind of things. So, you know, the the first part of it is I, I really want to be involved in my kids' lives over the next eight, nine years. Apparently, we spend 90% of the time we're ever going to spend with our children by the time they're 18. And that's a bit of an eye-opener. And so that's number one. Number two is um, looking at the last, you know, 10 years of buying and renovating houses, Kathy. You know, I've made an awful lot of mistakes. I screwed up on an awful lot of renovations. And, you know, I got my numbers wrong. I got the renovation wrong. And so just based on who I am, I would never sell those ones. I would keep them. And I would put them into my own portfolio. And lo and behold, I didn't know it at the time, but lo and behold, like all of those renovations and all of those homes that I decided to keep, you know, usually because they weren't the best ones. People always say, people would always come to me in Tampa, your your clients would come to and say, I bet you you get all the best ones. I'm like, ironically, I get, I get all the worst ones. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> That's I have how it's have- been for us too. <laughs> Right, yeah. right. So I've got bucket A, which is a really high quality bucket. And that's the bucket you can feel really confident about selling. You know, you, you know, it's a great property, you know, it's on a great street. And you got bucket B, which is maybe you got the roof wrong, you got the renovation, you got your budget wrong. And at that point, you're just upside down on the deal. And I would put it into my own personal portfolio. But the magic of real estate is you hold on to it, no matter how hard you screw up, you hold it for long enough. And after a while, it starts to cash flow. And after many, many years, you start looking back at it. And, and just it compounds on itself. And if you've got one and 10 and 15 to 20 homes compounding on themselves, it, you know, rents rising, inflation driving valuation, you get to this point And it's like, you know, my expenses are X. My income is, you know, 3X pretty residually. And so... Real wealth is exactly that. And so I'm not saying that, you know, this is it for me, but I'm saying in terms of 
um, just the W2 job, if you will, my day job, which was going and hustling for real estate and finding renovations and, you know, renovating them and selling them and, you know, all of the inspections and appraisals and everything that comes with that. I just don't really want to do that every day. Uh, and I don't really want to do that anymore. So that's really it. It's it's not that I've got a great team behind me. We're not retiring. I'm setting up a podcast. I'm setting up a you know a little tribe, a community that I I hope to help um, investors grow their journey. And um, with 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 grace, I think you and I are probably going to do a fund together, a growth fund. And so, yes, best news of the day, we're doing a fund. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is you've hustled for a long time. You've done a lot of work. You've helped a lot of investors. And now it's your time to focus on your family, to enjoy the real wealth and to enjoy the the harvest of these yeah. crappy properties that you held that are now making you a lot of cash flow. It's funny That's because fine. the the property I bought with you was more expensive than what you were selling at the time. You were keeping your renovation, your um your renovated properties under a hundred thousand. Uh, this was, you know, 10 years ago, uh, uh, right, yeah. kind of North of Tampa. If you remember, you know, there were 80, $90,000 properties. And then you brought yeah. one that was 150,000 at the time. It was in St. Petersburg. And I was like, Ooh, I want that one. If nobody else takes it, I'm taking it. Cause like I said, I'm like you, I take what's left. I'm not going to compete with our investors. Well, uh, 150,000 at the time was like almost, you know, almost double what you were selling. Um, so, but we went for it. And of course, uh, that's done really well too. One of the biggest regrets, and there's been many things would have, should have, could have, um, you would come to me when, when, during the opportunity zone, time when that first came out and you said, Kathy, this part of St. Petersburg is in the opportunity zone. You can buy lots for $20,000. It's rough. It's a very rough high crime area, but that's going to change as money pours in. And I went and drove with you and looked at it and I I don't know what happened. I didn't follow up. We didn't do it. What are those lots worth now? <laughs> you know what? Uh, I knew I knew at the time. I remember driving around with one of your um, one of your due diligence uh, people, and you know, like, oh, this, you know, this is high crime, and this is, you know, this is, you know, this is what it is, and these are the valuations. I'm like, but you don't understand. The city are investing literally hundreds of millions of dollars down here. You know, Ark Invest and the Innovation District was opening up down there. They were talking at the time about completely redeveloping a, a massive baseball stadium right in at that abuts against these neighborhoods. And so I could see and I knew um, because, you know, what I used to live in New York City uh, in, in a place called Brooklyn Heights. And I remember people telling me Williamsburg was getting cool. That's just underneath the Brooklyn Bridge. I like, no, it's not. No, no chance. Well, guess what? It's the hottest zip code in the United States. Right. Wow. Then I, I did my first kind of 25 to 30 flips in Charlotte. I remember a broker bringing me and they just put in a new uh, football stadium downtown Charlotte. I remember a broker coming to me and say, hey, listen, see these neighborhoods here? They're going to blow up. And so I went around and he brought me around and like chain link fences and sofas outside. And you get you get that that look right. Two minutes from downtown. I like, no way. This is too early for me. And so that is a million plus neighborhood now, right? And so if you see these things once, you see them twice. And then there's another yeah. neighborhood here in St. Petersburg called the Arts Warehouse District. It's like a $50,000 neighborhood. Folks were telling me here, yeah, that, that's blowing up over there. And I got in there. We bought five of them, thank, thankfully. But even still, I was like, no, that's a million dollar neighborhood now. And so you, just, you see this as we get older, it's like, okay, it's time to actually let go of you know your prejudices there's a little bit of risk involved but you know you don't make a great deal of money if you don't take a little bit of risk in life and so to your to answer your question those lots are we were picking them up for seven eight thirteen fourteen thousand dollars depending on you know depending on where that location is that's about a hundred and fifty thousand 
that's about a hundred fifty thousand dollar lot now. And so, oh, yeah. Oh, we, and I just, I just, it was literally laziness. I just was like, we just didn't do it. Um, the oh, opportunity gosh. zone thing was hard to understand. <laughs> I remember at the time it was like, no, no, I, I was teaching about it. I, I was one of the first to bring on experts, and I, I absolutely knew it was literally what we talked about before the show that sometimes when you're running a business and you're helping thousands of investors build their portfolio, you your stuff gets on the back burner. You That's and I have right. talked about this. We've we've created multimillionaires. And yeah. then, you know, sometimes like, well, gosh, I should have bought that or I should have done this or I should have done more. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's I think that was one of the reasons. It was just kind of back to business and and I forgot about it. Yeah, it's very interesting and, that you bring that up. In our business, we tend because we're we tend to be we tend to be providing value for people. And so that's our day job and we're like we're always doing it. We we actually ironically ignore ourselves. We ignore our own portfolios because we're always working to help other people. Uh, and to the to point of maybe the purpose of this uh, podcast today is there is a time when we kind of have to maybe hone in on what we've learned, focus a little bit on ourselves. You know, at 52 years of age, I'm investing now for my kids. I'm investing for my wife. I'm investing, you know, for legacy purposes. I'm not really investing for myself anymore. And so, but it is time to think about, you know, if you're in your 50s or 60s, you're probably at that point investing more for your kids, maybe a little bit more, uh, or your own personal lifestyle. So it's just important, I think, in this business to be a little bit selfish and take a little bit of time for yourself. And so that's what real wealth, that's what real wealth concept is all about. I remember meeting you for the very, very first time. And we were having this conversation about real wealth. I was like, yeah, that's it. And what is freedom? You know, what do you do with it? It's It's not that you know, people retire all that much anymore, but you work on things that you always wish that you had time to do. Like, I'm really looking forward to setting up a podcast. I'm really looking forward to working in a fund structure where I'm not compelled to just produce, 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 but I'm compelled to drive value and, you know, and use the skills and experience that we have to, 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 a, to a, 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 maybe a more sophisticated end. So really, really looking forward to it. But I do want to say this as, as, as we go out the door. Um, I have been teaching Real Wealth Network investors for a long time about the concept of debt by time by scale. You've heard me use that word before. And it's just important. It's an important reminder because as I look back at what is what why we're having this conversation right now or what is liberating people, it is taking on and understanding good debt understanding the power of time, inflation, and amortization, and doing it in enough scale so that it, it impacts your life. So there's only really two things that we know about the future. So I, I want to say this up front with you, Kathy. I know nothing about the future. I've, I've spent my entire <laughs> life, yeah, I spent my entire life, yeah, I consider myself somewhat informed. I read economic data all the time. I'm a like you, I'm a bit of an economic data junkie. And so but that, what that can do is it can say, oh, I think this, or I think that, or I think this is a good time, or I think this is a bad time. And I hear it emanating out of you so much more frequently now, it's really refreshing, is that we know nothing about the future. All that we know is that over a long period of time, things kind of get less choppy. And so we know the only two things that we do know and it's after, let's say, 2,000 conversations with investors. I think this, I think that, I think this is a good time to buy or bad time to buy. Interest rates are this or interest rates are that. It's not. What, what matters really is that you understand these two things. Inflation is mandated by the Federal Reserve. There will always be inflation. And inflation is a wind in your face. If you are not invested, it is blowing in your face and slowing you down. If you are invested... Inflation is you're putting out wings and you're harnessing a power you don't have any control over, but you're using it. So inflation, you know inflation is going to be baked in. And then if you buy a house and you present it well and you, and you price it right, it will rent. There will always be somebody who rents your home. And if that person rents your home, they will pay off your mortgage. Those two things are powerful pieces of information. Inflation will be with us. Renters will pay off your mortgage. If you just focus in on that, 
And then you use the concept of debt by time by scale to layer in on top of that. You can invest with confidence no matter what's happened. You can invest with confidence. You think, oh, the market's going up or going down or going sideways. Like, none of that matters. That's just all noise in your head. If you take a, you know, a 15, 20-year view, buy good real estate, good location, it, it will compound on itself. And one day, and this has happened to me, one day you look at your portfolio and you go, wow. And then you take your eye off it, look at it again a year later, two years later, you're like, oh my goodness. Like, look at, I'm not, I'm not earning this. I'm doing nothing here. I'm, all I'm doing is answering the odd, you know, tenant issue or the odd this, the odd that. But this thing is working way harder for me and producing way more than I ever could in a job. And so this is what, this is why we invest in real estate. This is why you have done so much good in this world. You know, you have done so much. You've added so much value to hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people, Kathy. Is you it make your me cry, David. <laughs> oh, d- no, it is, it, it is true. You have created, you have created so many millionaires and I'm, I'm just honored to be somebody who could help you do it. But I'm a recipient of it. Now, I was already pretty bought into the concept of it, but I've seen it now over and over again. So if you are listening to this podcast and you're listening to and you're, you're interested in what creates real wealth, it's just be confident in yourself. Understand that if you buy something, you manage it well, you harness inflation, your mortgages get paid off. Yeah, one house isn't going to do it. But, you know, five, six, seven, ten homes are going to do it. They're going to, they're going to free you. If you're mm-hmm. an employee or if you're entirely reliant on an income source or a W-2 two income that somebody else ultimately has the decision and control over, if you're reliant on that, you know, the way that you take back that control is you invest over a long period of time. And you have been hammering that home. I have been hammering that home and I am a result of it. So there you go. Take back control. Oh, I love it. Yes. It's it put the work in, in the beginning and let it grow, put, plant those seeds. It's so easy right. to spend money these days. There's so many good restaurants. There's great places to visit. But if you put that money in, in the seed of real estate, you'll be traveling more than you could imagine in 10 or 20 years. You know, you, you let that money grow. And That's and one right. more thing to add to your what you said, yes, you've in, inflation is here. Governments are addicted to money, and <laughs> they need money, yeah. and they're going to create money, and they're creating debt. We're watching it all the time, and yeah. that creates more inflation. That's not going to change. Uh, but That's on right. top of it, the government incentivizes you to do it, and you get tax benefits on top of of the inflation <laughs> that you're going to get and the pay down of the loan. So it's a trifecta. It's incredible. It really, you know what, uh, it is the end of the tax year, right? So uh, particularly, and I say this to anybody who is invested in real estate um, and maybe has a spouse that's not uh, currently employed or make sure you get, um, you know, a real estate professional um, uh, exemption for the tax status for uh, one of your family members because, you know, I'm just using bonus depreciation up and down my taxes this year. And so, you know, whatever my yeah. earnings are, I bring in bonus appreciation um, and it's perfectly legitimate use of the tax code. And I'm reducing my taxes almost entirely. Significantly. Yeah, one of the the best things you can do as a couple, as a family planning planning to have children is, uh, you know, have both of you working, have the, have the spouse who's planning on staying home with the kids get as many... Uh, properties under their yeah. credit, you know, with, with yeah. the, while they have a job, get yeah. as many properties as you can yeah. and, uh, and then quit your job because now you can have the professional status because you have to spend a certain amount of hours every year taking care of your properties. If you don't have properties, it doesn't work. But if, if you just load up, then quit your job, then you'll get those yeah those tax benefits that may that the savings in taxes may be what you made working. That's right. We see that all the time. Cause if, yeah. Right. No, it's, it, it's, it's, 
It's absolutely mind blowing. And and if you are listening to this and you're not familiar with what Kathy and I are talking about, I I highly recommend you delve into this because this is, you know, at the end of the year when you start looking, and I know a lot of very well-paid W2 income earners. So do you, Kathy, right? And so, you know, at the end of the year, they're just, they just, Shell, they're just shelling out to the government from, let's say, oh, yeah. January to March. They work for for the federal government, and that, that's okay. Like they, you know, that that's okay. But January to June, if you're in California, <laughs> I didn't want to say that. I'm in Florida, but there you go. But it is true. You're in Florida. You, not fair. <laughs> yeah, but if you look at it from that perspective, because life, you, you know, you look at it from from a perspective of maybe one year. But when you extrapolate that out over 10 years and 15 years, what you could have done had you retained that income, you know, that had, what you could have done if, you'd, if that money had been invested and just compounding on itself. And, you know, real estate is just one thing that don't get me wrong. There's other forms of, of investment and compounding. But what I've always loved about real estate is we can add value to it whenever we want. We can take our equity out of it without paying taxes. So I'll tell you another aha moment, and I'm sure that you've had it yourself. I remember the very first time I kind of learned this, where you get, let's say, five or six or seven homes that you've owned for a while, and you say, okay, well, I've got some equity over there, and you go and you do your first refinance. So you you hold them five, six years, seven years, and then you do your first your first finance. I recall doing that and walking out of a bank one day with $962,000 that I didn't pay tax on. And my rents used to be about 700 and they were about 1300 now. So I didn't have to pay a dime more for this equity. So I'm walking out the door. I felt like I'd, I felt like I'd robbed a bank. Honestly, you just get <laughs> this money. I didn't work for it. And now the tenants are paying the new loan and I still wasn't out of pocket $1. As I look back now at the last 30 years of being in business, you can make a lot of money in business. Don't get me wrong. But when you, you can make money, you know, a lot of people make, make good money, right? Either in a business or in a W-2 income. But really wealth is generated by like, so I call that like if, if, if there's, you know, a couple of stepping stones getting from income island to wealth island, you know, the very first thing you have to learn is when you make money is how do you invest it? How do you invest it? Because earning money, very few people earn their way to wealth. Most people have to invest their way there. And when you don't know how to invest your way there, and you're always like, well, I think this and I think that. Kathy, remember 2016 at all, at the, you know, conferences? I remember meeting you at a, at a, I think it was an IMN in 2014. That's where we met. And I remember then those people, this is 2014. Now think about this. You know, the, uh, we would always have a couple of sessions on where do we see the market going? And we'd come out like 2011, 12, 13, things are starting to, you know, improve a little bit. And people were like, yeah, we're getting a little bit, ahead, you know, we're getting a little bit ahead of our skis here now. And, you know, we see maybe one more year of growth. Um, but then, you know, we're planning yeah. on pulling back. And then in 2015, we'd go to the same event. We'd, same we'd meet same thing. They thought there was going to be a huge recession in 2014. I was, I debated Robert Schiller of the Case Schiller Index on Fox yeah. News in 2012. And his side of the debate was, it's a terrible and dangerous time to buy real estate. We're at a peak. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Cash flow is insane. This is the greatest wealth yeah. transfer in history. And I yeah. was right. So, yeah. You were people... right. You were right. <laughs> yeah. it, but it's it, not about even right or wrong, though, Kathy, is it? It's just what, what, what it is is that nobody knows. That, that, that's yeah. it. You happen to yeah. be right because, because you understand, you know, like, Robert was Schiller. Cash flow. It was just from a cash flow perspective. It's like no, no, no. That's like it's right. incredible. You just let someone, like you said, pay off all your expenses while a little extra goes into your pocket for future expenses or for cash flow today or to buy more. You know, it just right. it just made financial sense from that perspective. <laughs> if you look back, um, is there any time in your life where like a can of Coke has gotten less expensive ever? <laughs> Do you remember, like, uh, I, like I our know. Snickers I, bar? But I've been, I've been through the Great Recession, and Rich and I did get hit hard on that. Our Texas properties weren't affected at all. Our California properties were, and because they didn't cash flow, we had to give them back to the bank. Right. Uh, it, it like it was negative cash flow as the prices were going down, and we short sailed, and it was just 
we walked away from all that equity that we had put into it. Uh, so I do know what that's like. However, had I been able to hold those, had they not been negative cash flow, and when yeah. I say negative, I mean by thousands. It wasn't like just a few hundred. I, I could handle that, but this was thousands. Uh, we, uh, if we held them, oh, I mean, now only fourteen years later, they're they're worth probably three times uh, what they were. So it, it just is. A, it's like you said, you just have to hold it. You know, twenty years is going to pass. You and I know that. Like, how fast did the last twenty years go? Oh my goodness. Uh, that, that that's probably the most important because we're just living our lives, right? So the next 20 years are just going to pass uh, just because yeah. we're living our lives. Investments make you wealthy just while you're going about your day to day. It's not like you're going to work every day. You're just, they're, they're doing it and you're right. It just passes and it passes so quickly. 30 to 50 in my, in my world, 30 to 50. Oh my goodness. That was like 10, 10 minutes, right? Yeah. And to your point, and I do want to bring that up because I think that's what a lot of people like a catastrophic loss in real estate is really rare, as in where you have lost all of your money and everything. You can lose your equity, you know, but if you have fixed long term debt and you in the scenario where you are losing thousands a month in cash flow. OK, so let's really lay into that. This is where real wealth, you know, real wealth is fundamentally based in that you looked at this and you said, we're going to Texas and we're going to go to where the cash flow is. Right. And so I completely and utterly agree that 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 tactic works. But as you develop and as you get, you know, let's say wealthier, you have more and more investments coming in. You can you can add a few of those spicier opportunities to your portfolio and you know so i carry I pretty heavy reserves and when i say heavy reserves i carry reserves that are probably realistically i carry reserves that are at least a year of expenses for every one of my homes so i would want to have a pretty catastrophic zero um zero income year for for it to take the whole portfolio down and can we talk about this for a minute because i i think this is important what i have done and what i've seen you do is i have dollar cost averaged into real estate as in i have we all have our own different metrics but i would advise somebody to buy at least a house a year right so put down save put down sixty seventy thousand dollars and buy a three hundred thousand dollar house don't go crazy in any one year then do it the next year and then you hear that the market's falling down, do it again. You hear that the market's go, do it again. You stop listening, just consistently buy, which means because it's all about the time that you own, not the price that you bought at. And so if I bought a house, I just let's just let's just, you know, go back in time a little bit. Let's imagine I bought a house for eighty five thousand dollars. That's worth, you know, four hundred thousand dollars today, right? Did it really matter if I bought it for eighty five? 75 or 105 does any of those numbers matter no yeah does it matter if i had to do a new roof or a new ac or you know five years ago to put a new kitchen no because now i own it for 405 i have it paid off free and clear i put twenty thousand dollars down to buy the eighty thousand dollar house and here we are you know 20 years later and it's the benefit of that hindsight allows you to just soften all of your fear based oh I, I need to be i need to get it right i need to get the feng shui right i need to get the direction right i need to get the orientation <laughs> right i need to get the, all of that is irrelevant so if I, if you have listened to me yeah. talk for the last few years i will not talk the details of a house with somebody you yeah. know i just you know what size of the bedrooms i'm like i don't know what size the bedrooms are um <laughs> you know is this i would never ever ever invest in a three one i only invest in three two okay I'll invest in a 3-1. It's about just dollar cost averaging every year. And some people, so, and it's not how many doors you own. It's the size of your debt relative to your net worth. I could not agree more. Uh, when we started buying, we were buying close to retail in, in Texas. A lot of, a lot of times yeah. we still do. And yeah. uh, maybe just getting five grand off buying yeah. in Rockwall. It's like, if you're in a really good neighborhood, you're probably not going to get the greatest deal. I mean, in some cases, yeah. yes, but if you're not you, if you're not living there and 
on the MLS every day and knowing the market, you know, it's, 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 it's hard for us out of staters. So we That's paid right. close to retail on our first 10, 14 properties in Texas. Good for you. And people were just laughing at us like, man, you don't know anything about investing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, instead of paying one thirty for a $150,000 house, we paid one forty five, And, uh, and those are worth 400 today. Like you said, like, who cares? Who cares? Doesn't All matter. right. We do need to wrap up. I just want to wrap up with one comment, and that is that you're also helping the legacy of my kids. Uh, a, a year ago, when you found out that my daughter, Krista, was traveling the world and um, in, in, in Europe a lot, you, you said, oh, my gosh, she should really, or you, Kathy, you should look into the Golden Visa program in Portugal. Uh, so you... Me, you and you and me and Krista and her boyfriend Alec uh, met in Portugal to go check that out. I was just hoping secretly that maybe they would be interested in real estate. You know, they they hadn't shown interest until then, and they came to all the meetings with the attorneys and the CPAs. And they looked at the properties and met with the developers, and you know, again, crossing my fingers. Well, they left that trip completely in love with international real estate. They sold the Golden Visa program to a lot of people who actually didn't have a country. A lot of people don't realize there's there's refugees, there's people who don't have a visa or a, a passport. Yeah. yeah. So they really changed the lives of people. That program's over, uh, but they were able to uh, help those people buy properties, get into the queue to to uh, get a passport in, in Portugal, which then has access to the whole EU. Yeah. Um, so when that closed though, I, I want I want people to know because you know Krista did a show here with Alec and um, you know they're young so they look like maybe they are too young to know about this but behind the scenes you've been mentoring them and yeah. you sold international real estate you're from Ireland you sold international real estate for years yeah. before you came to America to mm-hmm. uh, to to flip so I just want to thank you for getting my daughter hooked on real estate. <laughs> You know, that's it's an easy thing to do. Um, you know, the, the Americans, and, and I, anyone's ever heard of me, I, I just might not the country. I, I love this place. I'm a citizen of the United States. But there's, there's Americans tend to be quite, you know, this is a bit of a generalization, but they tend to be quite America centric. And then there's the rest of the world. Okay. And so, like, just to, let's take, you know, you got American football, you know, what you guys call football, it's big in America. But then you got soccer. And it's global, right? So global real estate is a massive, massive industry. And in, so, A, you've got the world to play with. So, you know, we worked in Lithuania, Poland, Montenegro, Costa Rica, um, Belize, Buenos Aires, just all over the world, right? Uh, Berlin. I did, I did great projects and I loved it, right? But then we would that's the then we would sell them to like guys from Abu Dhabi and you know investors from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and Sweden and Norway and Ireland and England. It's like so you're playing in a different game, and so you were absolutely right. The um, Krista and Alec, they love travel, and one of the great upsides of travel, as I do, I think that's why I, I jumped on a plane and went to Lisbon to see them and to see you guys out there and to, you know, help them, you know, get started with it. But the, the bottom line is it's, it's, it's a massive industry and I wish them the absolute best of luck. Um, I'm here to continue to educate them every step of the way. And I cannot wait to see their growth, Kathy. They are plugged in. They're smart. They've got the, the skill set. Um, you know, on one side, they've got the, you know, the, the technical skill set on the other side, they've got the sales skill set and then, you know, the due diligence, they're bringing the due diligence to me. And, you know, we connected them to a good friend of mine who's helping them with the due diligence as well. And so they're bringing great products. They're hope they can sell this globally. And I really wish them the very best of luck. And if they put their, if they put the work in, they're going to be very, very successful real estate investors. So watch Kathy's daughter. Watch, watch her grow. I think that that's uh, <laughs> if I could buy shares in them, I'd, I'd buy shares in them right now. It, when we might, but what we are doing is we're buying a property. We're going in. It's a really cool concept to um, to do shared vacation ownership. This is yeah. kind of one of my new things that I like doing because you get to visit the property in a cool place, mm-hmm. but you also get to put it on the you know rental market when you're not using it. So you and I and a couple of other real wealth investors are um, going in on a 
a single family home in Tulum after going on Krista and Alex tour. I think all in each of us is putting 75,000 in because it's cash only really is, is the only, but these homes are $300,000. So with four of yeah. us, it's 75,000 each total um, to have a three bedroom single family home with eight cenotes on the, on the land and all kinds of amenities. So you know, we're also a client of Krista now too. <laughs> we, we are, and, and and that's exciting, isn't it? And that's the thing as well. Like the um, investing in the United States, I love it. You know, that's your you know risk free. And if you're investing for the first time, I wouldn't suggest for the very first time. I wouldn't suggest you go racing around globally looking for deals because there's a lot more to deal with. You know, you've got language, other taxes, other laws, developers, there's a lot of other th things you don't know. But so I would say fundamentally grow a base, grow some wealth. There are a lot of wealthy people in the world. And when they do, when, when people do grow a certain amount of wealth, they're now they're open to, you know, the idea of op you know buying another you know three bedroom two bath two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house in northern Tampa where I'm going to stick a tenant in that's just that's just that's popcorn I do that you know all day every day just eating popcorn you can you know continue to do that but it doesn't add any value really to my life in terms of you know where I would go or if I would use it so it's a really super exciting for me to do something like this. I think we can run masterminds out of our, our new place, Kathy. So I'm looking forward oh, yeah. to that, honestly. Yeah, there's a couple of houses next to This is in Tulum, by the way, just uh, no, 15, 10, 15 minutes from the beach, I think 10 minutes from the beach, uh, yeah. right next to where the new trains, the new Mayan train is coming in and the new yeah. Tulum airport. So if anyone's interested in getting the houses next to ours, where then there'd be nine bedrooms. And if everybody rented all three, definitely a great place to do. Uh, I don't think there's money left. Honestly, no, they're, and, and, they're going really fast. Mind blowing how ostentatious they build down there. So you, you know, you get your you know your <laughs> Lenar, beautiful. you get your Lenar community, you know your Dr. Horton community, and your boxy homes, and they're lovely. You know, we get it all. But you go down there and just the landscaping and the ostentatious architecture. Oh, the architecture, yeah. Oh, it's it's mind blowing. Yeah, you have to go on the next tour. So if, if people want to find out, you can go to gatewayinvestors.com. Um, okay. you, you can set up a meeting with Alec and uh, ask him about this community and the potential of buying next to us or with us. Who knows? Maybe we'll want to buy more. Yeah. Again, that's gatewayinvestors.com. David, so fun to have you on. We've gone Thank double you. over time and I'm so glad we did. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> you were you were interviewing me, so that 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 over that overtime was probably gonna happen. It was kind of baked in. I'm a, I'm verbose. <laughs> you know that. You have so much to say and all good. David, thank you so much. Hope to see you on the next Tulum tour. And I cannot wait. People are going to be wanting to know about the fund. It's going to be a while. It's going to be a few months. So um, we've got other funds that we're, we've got open right now, yeah. which you can find at uh, growdevelopments.com. Got some really cool things. This one will be, a f I don't know, four or so months out down the road. But we'll That's get right. to it. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, Bye. for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. It's been it's been fun. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for all you've done for Real Wealth. Um, I was going to say it's a it's bittersweet, bitter in that so many people would love to invest with you. But like you said, the numbers at, at these high rates and in a high growth market, it's just hard to get positive cash flow. But we're going to solve that problem with the fund. So it's, That's right. it's sweet. That's it's bitter and sweet. And the sweet is we're not done with you yet. Right. I think we should always be growing, always be growing, always be morphing, always be getting into a better version of yourself. So I'm, I'm, I'm not fading into this sunset here at all. You know, we're just growing. We're just <laughs> developing. We're, we're taking what we know and we're doing new things. Love it. All right. Thank you, Kathy. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. Again, just go to realwealthshow.com. You can get a list of our other referral partners nationwide. There are so many who have done just like David. It's taken a lot of trust to get people to understand that in five years, 10 years, man, it's all going to be worth it. You just got to stick it out. And there will be repairs needed. There will be vacancies. But in the long run, in the long run, it's going to be well worth it. Again, that's realwellshow.com. I hope to see you on one of our upcoming tours or live events. Wishing you very happy holidays and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.
The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.